Hello students, welcome to the channel Physics by Dr. Pratna and today we are going to start with a new topic which is called as a vacuum technology. So this vacuum technology has a wide applications in a synthesis and characterization technique. For example, if you are trying to synthesize a film in say spray pyrolysis unit and if the chamber is evacuated or if that chamber it is having less number of air molecules there will be the less disturbance of the air molecules and you are going to get a pure film okay similarly if you are taking the the same film for the characterization say uh, SEM if you want to take the SEM of your the, uh, the film which you have synthesized and we know that in a SEM we take the film and we bombard the beam of the high energy electrons on this uh, surface and if this beam is not disturbed or if there is a no interference of the air molecules then you are going to get the better results if that electron is backscattered of that or that electron is transmitted through so whatever results you are getting so the results will be better or they will be more accurate that is why this vacuum technology has a wide range of applications in a different fields of the research in a vacuum technology or to create a vacuum uh, we need a vacuum pump okay so let me draw the block diagram of this uh, uh, what elements are present uh, to prepare or to generate the vacuum only vacuum technology which can be used to generate the vacuum is basically consisting of three units okay Suppose this is the sample chamber or this is the characterization chamber or the synthesis chamber where you want to generate the vacuum for the better results of your research. Then, so this is a sample chamber that should be provided with the vacuum pump. So this is the first element of the vacuum technology which is the vacuum pump. So this vacuum pump has a purpose to generate the vacuum inside the sample chamber. There are large number of the vacuum pumps. The classification of them we are going to see within just a few minutes. Okay, so first this vacuum technology will consist of a vacuum pump. So purpose of the vacuum pump is to generate the vacuum. Okay, or to reduce the air molecules or to remove the air molecules from this sample chamber. Okay, the second element is a vacuum gauge. So this vacuum gauge, uh, it checks uh, whether the expected vacuum has been generated or not. So there are different types of the vacuums like a low vacuum, medium vacuum, high vacuum, ultra high vacuum, very high vacuum. So whether uh, say for example if you have a high vacuum of say 10 to minus 6 torrs. Okay, so let's say this is the expected vacuum in the sample chamber. So this vacuum gauge checks for the uh, expected vacuum okay so the purpose of the vacuum gauge is to check whether the expected vacuum has been created or not then we can see here the third element which is a leak detector this is a very important part of this vacuum technology even if the block diagram is looking very simple so uh, this vacuum technology consists of lots of complicated piping systems okay so the speed of the uh, vacuum or the uh, the speed at which this uh, uh, air molecules are swiped out away uh, that totally depends on the diameter of the pipe and the length of the pipe okay so a lot of complex piping system is present between the sample chamber and the vacuum pump okay so it is necessary to check the leaks uh, in the uh, complex piping system Okay, for example, if there is, there is a leak over here, okay, so even if this vacuum chamber is getting evacuated, uh, still the air from the outside will co keep coming inside, okay. So, there will not be use of this, any of this uh, vacuum technology. So, the leak detectors play a very important role in the detection of the leaks in the complex piping system and in the sample chamber also, okay. So this vacuum technology, whatever updated vacuum technology is there. So that basically consists of three basic elements, vacuum pumps to generate the vacuum, vacuum gauge 
to check whether the expected vacuum is created or not and the third is a leak detector. So in this lecture series we are going to see so the, what kind of the different types of this vacuum pumps, vacuum gauge and vacuum or the leak detectors are being used uh, in this vacuum technology. So let us first see so the vacuum pumps which are used to generate the vacuum. So let us see what is the classification of this vacuum pumps. So see here, so this vacuum pumps which are used to generate the vacuum they can be basically classified as a gas transfer and a gas entrapment. Now in the previous uh, few minutes we have seen that so this is the sample chamber and uh, this is where we have connected so this vacuum pump. So this is how we have connected uh, this vacuum pump. So see here, so this is the sample chamber. And this is a vacuum pump okay so the gas transfer it is just mechanically removing the gas uh, from the sample chamber and the gas entrapment is whatever air molecules are present over here to trap them inside the chamber only okay so first gas in a gas transfer vacuum pumps we remove the air molecules mechanically from this uh, sample chamber whereas in a gas uh, entrapment we uh, capture or we minimize the energy or we absorb the air molecules inside the walls of the uh, chamber itself sample chamber itself okay in the gas transfer is again classified into the positive displacement and a kinetic so the positive displacement is a mechanical removal by using uh, say so again they can be and a number of ways to remove these uh, uh, gas molecules mechanically. We can use rotary vent pump. Then we can use roots pump, crew pump, and all. Okay, so the different mechanics have given the different names. See here, this vacuum technology is being updated uh, each and every day. Okay, but the basic principles. For all these will remain same. Okay, so the if the mechanically um, some uh, rot veins are there, then it is called as a rotary vent pump. Okay, if some screw is there, then it is called as a, a screw positive displacement pump. Okay, so whatever mechanical parts you are using, the names are given accordingly. Okay, so in a positive displacement, the air molecules are removed by using screws or veins. Okay. But in a kinetic, you are providing some kinetic energy. For example, if you are uh, giving some uh, heat, if you are heating, so these air molecules will get heated and they will uh, come out of this uh, vacuum chamber by themselves. Okay, so this another type is called as a kinetic. And in a gas entrapment, as I already said that in a gas entrapment, we... Uh, do some electrical and magnetical arrangement so, so that the air molecules are getting some energy they are being stuck to the or they collide with the walls of the sample chamber and they get absorbed into the high kinetic energy it means that the uh, air molecules inside the sample chamber they are trapped inside the chamber only and in a gas transfer they are removed from the gas chamber this is how we classify the uh, vacuum pumps into the gas transfer and a gas entrapment. As I already said that this vacuum can have a different range like low vacuum, medium vacuum, high vacuum, ultra high vacuum or a very high vacuum. Now we can say that uh, for a low vacuum or for a medium vacuum we are using this uh, rotary vent pump. Then in a kinetic pump we are going to see this oil diffusion pump and in this gas entrapment we are going to see sputter ion pump okay so this rotary vent uh, one example of each type we are going to see so this rotary vent pump is used to uh, get a low or a medium vacuum 
So this oil diffusion pump, uh, it can be used to get the high vacuum and for ultra high vacuum we have to use this sputtering pump. So we are going to get, uh, we are going to study in detail one example of uh, each type of the vacuum pumps. Okay, so in my next lecture we are going to study the rotary vent pump. Thank you for watching.